Hi class, and welcome to week four of Introduction to Healthcare Delivery Systems. So this week, you'll be reading two chapters. One is titled Health Service Professionals, and the other is Medical Technology. You do have a quiz this week. The quiz does not include chapter five. It's on chapters one through four. The link will be available to you all week. So that means from September 12th through September 18th. So Sunday at 11.59, you have to have completed the quiz. You also have a discussion board assignment due this week. The discussion board assignment is on the topic of medical technology. You will be watching a TED Talk that is on an eye exam that can be given from a smartphone. It's a very interesting TED Talk. And then I want you to complete your discussion board assignment, which in entails you researching an article on some type of medical innovation. Your post should be at least 500 words, and you are responsible for responding to two of your peers' posts as well. Now I'm going to scroll through this week's content folder and just briefly describe to you the materials, information, and links provided to you for this week. All right, so let's get started here. First, as always, start with the PowerPoint slides or presentations that coincide with the assigned readings for this week. Below that is the quiz. The quiz is about 20 questions, um, multiple choice, true and false. I do, once you enter the quiz, you have about an hour to complete it, which is more than enough time, all right? Again, if you have any questions, don't hesitate to let me know. Below that, I have some information here I wanted you to read over, and it talks about the difference between MDs and DOs, which MD uh, is an abbreviation for Doctor of Medicine, and DO for Osteopathic Medicine. Now, the primary difference between both degrees with the osteopathic medicine, it emphasizes more the musculoskeletal system of the body. It's more of a holistic approach. A lot of focus is on preventative medicine, while the doctor of medicine is trained in allopathic medicine, which views medical treatment as an active intervention to produce a counteracting reaction in an attempt to neutralize the effects of disease. So again, with an example, you know, they use treatments that affect someone who's ill differently than someone who's healthy, all right? So we're looking at antibiotics. Now, presently, there is a little below 70% of all physicians are MDs. And then in 2013, there was about 7.3% that were DOs. Now, osteopathic physicians, do have a history dating back to the 1800s. And currently, there are about 35 osteopathic medical schools compared with the 135 allopathic institutions, again, those are the MDs, um, that provide the MD degrees. Now, what are some differences? So let's look through our list here. Well, similarities, they have a similar um, educational uh, journey, right? So they attend four years of medical school, licensed by the same state licensing boards. They can practice um, medicine in all 50 states. They are found in every type of specialty medicine, and they follow the same undergraduate academic path. However, some of the differences, well, with the doctor of osteopathy, they actually take an additional 200 hours of training, learning manipulation of techniques of the musculoskeletal system. DO physicians tend to be more PCPs, whereas you'll find um, students that graduate with an MD tend to focus more on specialty areas. The doctor of osteopath path um, students take the comprehensive medical licensing exam, while the MD medical students take the United States medical licensing exam. 
MDs tend to practice medicine in urban metropolitan areas, and you'll find more DOs um, in, are more prevalent in rural areas. Now below that, I have a table here that just talks about the differences between primary care and specialty care. So primary care, we're looking at first contact care, right? And in regards to managed care, PCPs are usually looked at as the gatekeepers. They have a very important role in controlling cost, utilization, and rational allocation of resources. PCPs tend to also follow through with the course of treatment, and they coordinate various activities for their patients. They focus on a person as a whole, and they Primary care students spend a significant amount of their time in ambulatory care settings. Now you look at specialty care, generally they, generally it follows primary care to see a specialist. Usually you require a referral, of course, except if you have like an open access type of um, insurance plan. Again, it's uh, specialty care is episodic. It's more focused and intense. It centers on, particular, on a particular disease or organ system. And usually students in medical subspecialties spend the majority of their time in inpatient hospitals where they are exposed to state-of-the-art medical technology. All right, so those are some points I wanted to touch on in, um, from chapter four. Okay, again, chapter five, you are responsible for reading it. Um, again, it's on medical technology. It is very interesting. And I would like to touch on that. I do want you to focus on the main forces that shaped innovation, diffusion, and utilization of technology in the U.S. All right, there's a number of them listed on 167. Be sure to read each one um, and each one is covered uh, in a detailed um, manner in the chapter assigned for this week. Now I'm going to continue scrolling down. All right, so let's go a little further down. Here is the TED Talk that I'd like you to view before going on to do your discussion board assignment on medical technology. And this TED Talk touches on how medical technology was put to use in order to address a global health problem. It is actually a very interesting talk, and uh, I'm sure you're going to enjoy it. Below that is the discussion board forum for this assignment. Again, as I had shown you back in week one, you will be clicking on this link and creating a new thread, all right? And you will be posting your discussion board assignment in that new thread and you are responsible for responding to two of your peers. Let's continue scrolling through. All right, so the next video is talking about the primary care physician shortage. So it talks about this imbalance that we have between the number of specialists here in the US and the number of PCPs. Uh, if I'm not mistaken, it's about eight minutes, so it's not too long. Below that is a video that touches on the topic of how the internet impacts medical practice. And then here is a short video talking about electronic health records. And below that is a video that talks about telehealth or e-health. And last but not least is our weekly checklist. Now, be sure to complete everything on this list before continuing on to the following week. As always, if you have any questions at all, do not hesitate to contact me. That's what I'm here for. Best of luck, everyone, and take care.